Can everyone hear me? Do I need the microphone? <laughs> I talked loud anyway. And um, I want to welcome everyone to Kamishi Technology Center. I'm so happy that you have chosen um, to be here and chosen us for your uh, career journey. And um, my name is Jody Dunn. I'm the campus director here. I started July 1, came from the McAllister campus. And we're going to go through a few housekeeping things today just to help you understand what the expectations are so you know what you need to do and what you can expect from us as staff. And I want to introduce the staff that are with me today. We have Gacy Bell, who's our registrar. We have Tammy, who is our academic center. Stephen, Tammy Stephen. I'm still getting names. <laughs> I'm still getting the names straight. We have Becky Ward, who's our student services coordinator. We have Holly Barnes, who's our practical nursing instructor. We have Bill Smith, who is our industrial safety coordinator. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get through this as quickly as possible for those of you that weren't able to be here for our pre-orientation sessions that we had before school started. We're going to run through this PowerPoint. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Okay. Work starts on August 10th. So here we are, August 10th. We're going to review um, the dress, what, we, what our expectations are for your dress, attendance, driving and transportation, cell phones, tobacco use, ID badges. And we're going to talk a lot about safety today. You'll hear me talk a lot about safety. And um, that's something that we pride ourselves in um, with the career tech system and um, a live work environment. Many of you are going to have opportunities to work in a lab or a shop setting, and those are considered live work environments. In professionalism, we teach you employability skills, we teach you good work ethics, and professionalism within your career major. Our vision, KTC is recognized as a leader in career tech education and business excellence. Our mission is very simple, preparing people for success. Our core values are listed here, educational and instructional excellence, commitment to staff and stakeholders, personal and professional respect, community support and involvement, responsibility and accountability, quality standards and services. This is our strategic plan, and this encompasses the vision, our mission, and our core values, all in one document. How many of you have been on our Kindness Technology Center webpage? Okay, for those of you that haven't, we do have a, um, a very robust uh, webpage, if you will. We have a district wide webpage and then we have um, uh, web pages for each of our 10 campuses within the district. I want to encourage you to look to that web page and um, there's a lot of good information on there about the district and about our campus here in Atoka. Um, we, have, we all have staff email your teachers. We'll give you their email and information for you to communicate with them. And we all have a staff email available if you for some reason need to get on there and email us for any reason. We have an in-district 800 number, 888-567-6645, that's in state only. And our regular number's listed there. And um, we use a, a variety of other communication tools, mass call and text messaging. Um, through school messenger um, Twitter and or Facebook we use those uh, social media sites to post activities and events through the year uh, different things that go on here that we want to promote so that everyone knows what we're doing at Kamishi Technology Center in the Topic campus we will use school messenger to um, promote 
activities and events, but we also use that for uh, bad weather days and if we have, have school closings for any reason. Here is a list of our partner schools um, that we serve. We also periodically have um, students come from um, Caddo. I think we have some students this year from Caddo and other areas that may be in one of our other campus districts. But I know many of you, I'm sure, are attending one of these schools. Go ahead to the next slide. And um, JC, this just shows. Here, this, um, this map shows the Common Issue Technology Center District. You can see how large we are in the lower southeast portion. The dark red or brownish color represents the Common Issue Technology Center District. We have 10 campuses within southeastern Oklahoma, one administrative office in, in Wilberton. We are the largest technology center district in the state of Oklahoma and we uh, are also the largest technology center district in the United States covering 11,200 square miles. So that's a big deal, you know, I think that's something to be proud of and something for you to, to think about when you're promoting KTC. Instructional times. Um, here, as you can see, our adults start at 8.15 in the morning. High schools usually arrive around 8.25. You're going to have a morning break at 9.45 to 10. Um, high schoolers, you'll be leaving the AM session at around 10.55. Adults leave at 11.30. And resume class at 12.15. Um, high schoolers get here for the PM session around 12.30 with a 45 minute break at 1.45. And most of our high schoolers leave at three and adults leave at 3.30. I did visit with some of your uh, superintendents yesterday. And um, I know some of you are going four day weeks. And um, we talked about the fact of maybe getting you here earlier, closer to 8.15 and the uh, 11, 15, or the 12.15 time and maybe even staying a little bit longer. And they were open to that, so we're going to be visiting more with your principals and counselors about that and to see what we can do this year. And um, definitely we're going to work on it for next year. Expectations regarding dress. Um, students are expected, of course, to conform to the individual clothing requirements of the training program in which they are enrolled. I don't think that should be any surprise to you. We consider safety. When you're when you're you know uh, wearing wearing a specific uh, outfit or you know you get up in the morning you're deciding on what to wear just think of the, your career major make sure you're wearing something safe you look the part uh, think about every day being a job interview you know is this outfit commonly worn in my workplace that's something that you might want to ask yourself. Things you just can't wear, we advise you um, to really think about it before you were to wear something like this to school. Alcohol, if, you know, anything that promotes alcohol, tobacco, drugs, games, sexual activity, death, clothing that is not commonly associated with your career area. Students are expected to dress in social good taste, so consider your messaging the length of your skirts and things like that, underwear showing, sleeping gear, uh, you know, don't, you know, I advise you not to wear your, uh, your pajamas or your pajama pants or house shoes to school. Hats, caps, and hoodies and tights. Is what I'm wearing going to profile me in a negative way? That's something that you don't want. This is our um, calendar, and we gave hard copies of this um, to all the students that attended our free orientation um, session. Are we making, did we make copies for them? Yes. Okay. Okay. We have copies of this for you as well. This shows the, our breaks, and most of our breaks coincide with your um, homeschool breaks. There may be some days when you guys are out and some days that we are out. 
that we'll work on those, um, but there's not very many. One thing about if you're attending a school that only goes four days a week, we still have class on, on Fridays here. Um, so we still meet five days per week. And I know most of the cosmetology students already know they are expected to be here. And we want you to come, uh, you know, if your school is out, we want you to come. However, if there's not a way for you to make it, then we, you know, we understand that if you depend on a route bus to get to the school to be picked up. But we want you to come if you're able. Something that's really big, and I want, I want us to uh, really promote this this year is attendance. Making sure you're here every day, um, but we understand that things come up, life happens, maybe you're sick, maybe you have a doctor's appointment, maybe you have a death in the family or something that you're gonna have to miss a day of school. If that were to happen, we just ask that you communicate with your teacher, communicate um, with the registrar, make sure that we know but you're given 10 days per semester. We have no excused absences, but you are given 10 days to use at your discretion. You know, uh, don't be that student that just takes all 10 days just because you want to sleep in or uh, you just don't feel like coming to school that day. Use those days wisely because what can happen is if you surpass the 10 days um, and you're out of compliance on attendance, it may affect your credit and we don't want that to happen. We don't want you to be in a situation where you don't receive your credits for the semester. So always communicate with your instructor. Um, anyone in the office can help you. Review your attendance summary every week to make sure that any school activities that you may have had at your home school or here at the Tech Center have been um, noted and documented. Those do not count against you. Always fill out an admin after missing. Always communicate with us to let us know what is going on. One thing that's really important, and this goes back to the safety issue, make sure that you check out at the front office in order to leave campus. Um, that's to protect you, that's to protect us. We wanna make sure that our students are safe at all times, so be sure and check out and uh, secondary students must have parental guardian permission to check out and um, your parent needs to notify us if, if you um, are going to check out and you're a high school student we require that as well and tardy some students tend to think that if they're tardy if they arrive late if they leave early that that doesn't count against them and um, figure into their attendance and it does. Um, tardies can add up pretty fast. So be cognizant if you're tardy, how many days that you're tardy, how many days you're checking out early because they can add up and they can also throw you into an attendance compliance, compliance issue. Driving. Um, we support whatever your home school allows you to do. If you drive, um, we just ask that you drive safely, legally, and responsibly. So you park in the line, within the parking lot, in the front parking lot. And um, we ask that students don't park behind the building. Again, that's a safety issue. So please use the front parking spots available. And um, we ask that you're not going to your car and sitting in your car. Again, that's a safety issue because we're observing our parking lot and things all the time and um, not to say that you're necessarily doing anything wrong in your car but that's a safety issue and it, um, it, it, it uh, alerts us that there's a red flag and you know we may need to deal with it no parking lot visits tobacco free campus that includes in your car when I say tobacco free, that means any kind of tobacco, smoking, skull, chewing tobacco, whatever, uh, vape, vapor cigarettes, all those things. Um, leave them at home because we are a tobacco free campus. And be sure if you're driving to stop at the bus stop signs, you know, this happens more commonly than you think. I see, I'm on the road a lot and I see this happen more often than it needs to. 
So when you see a bus stop, you know, and the, and the stop time's out, make sure that you stop and you're not passing the bus. Cell phones. Um, I know everyone in here probably owns a cell phone, a smartphone, and, and I think all my staff here at KCC does as well. We, are, we use our cell phones a lot. We consider that a cell phone is, can be used as an educational tool. So when you're in your class or your lab, students may operate devices as educational tool, tools according to the policy established by their instructor for acceptable use. So if your instructor is allowing you to use your, uh, your cell phone for educational purpose, we support that. However, if you abuse that and you're texting or you're calling and so forth and so on, we would deal with that. But always use your cell phone for educational purpose when your instructor allows it. Again, these are all the tobacco uh, products that we talked about earlier that are um, um, actually, um, I mentioned this earlier, so just no, oh, no crossing the street. I was wondering, what is that? Okay. No crossing the street or going to the tree line. That's something that um, some of our campuses, and I think here they had some issues that, okay, we're a tobacco free campus, then I'm going to go over here uh, over by the Choctaw campus, or I'm going to go over here by these trees or across the street. And we ask that you don't do that because landowners and those folks that own those properties don't like it and they will complain. And again, just think about, you know, social good taste and promoting good behavior and following the rules. Expectations regarding ID badges. Um, it's important that all staff and students wear ID badges. This is a safety issue. Um, when we have people on campus that we see that may not have an ID badge, that sends a red flag to us that, okay, they're not a student, or what are they doing, who are they visiting, you know? In this day and time, you just never know. So when our students have safety badges and our staff have badges, we know they belong here. If there's not, if there's someone here without a badge, then again, we're gonna investigate and see what they're doing here. You will be getting your badge when, Jay Sue? Soon. Jay Sue and I think Ms. Abel, is she also helping you do badges too? Okay. Jay Sue's doing the badges. She's got a lot of them done um, of the students that participate in our pre orientation sessions. We will get those badges to you, um, to you very soon so you can begin wearing them. Replacement badges are $5. Um, and again, students are pretty good about keeping up with their badges, but if you were to lose your badge, um, Gacy can make you a new one, but you'd have to pay $5. Sometimes the badges wear and they crack, and um, in some of those instances, we will waive the $5 charge. Campus safety again. And um, we have video cameras inside our buildings, outside our buildings, and we um, review those all the time. So just letting you know, it's not necessarily used as a gotcha tool, but we're observing, we're making sure that our campus is safe. Anything that is out of the ordinary, we review and we investigate, okay? So just keep that in mind. It's for your safety, it's for our safety. Career Tech student organizations. Um, we have the opportunity for students to participate in each of these four student organizations, depending on what program or career major you're in. You will be a part of one of these organizations. And it's, it's very good um, leadership opportunities, community service opportunities can really help grow and expand you as a student and a person going into whatever career of your choice. And I'm going to ask, um, is Becky in here? Yeah. Becky. Uh, Ms. Ward, um, she works a lot with our student organizations. And I'm going to let her just kind of tell you a little bit about her experiences here at the Topa campus. And do we have any students, just uh, second year students that have participated? 
we have these two young ladies right oh, here. Oh, okay. right. Um, this past year was a very successful year for all of our CPSO organizations, and we competed at the local, district, state, and even the national level. Um, in Skills USA, we had um, a team, an opening and closing team, and these two girls were, these three girls, sorry Brooke, um, were, a mem were members of the opening and closing team. They won the state contest, and then they got to go to Louisville, Kentucky for a week and competed at nationals. Um, our school paid for everything. We flew out there. We stayed all week in a really nice hotel. It was an awesome experience. Um, we also, uh, our BPA, oh, Timothy, Matt here, Timothy. he went in, he placed 10th in the nation in his contest. And um, he, he wants to go back. Um, our BPA um, chapter, they went to um, uh, Philadelphia. Boston. 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 Um, is Hope in here? She's okay. Hope. Um, she uh, made the finals in the speech contest, and she did an awesome job. And they had a, a lot of fun as well. Um, uh, we had a student from Caney High School, Stevie Henry, and she got to go in July to the national FCCLA contest, and it was in San Diego, California. So that was a lot of fun for her. Um, but I tell all of you this to tell you that there are going to be opportunities for you to compete and get outside your box and get outside of Atoka County and go and do things and, um, and Shaq can tell you he went he was an active member last year for us in Skills USA um, it's, it's a lot of fun and I challenge you to get involved and you're probably going to be asked at some point um, hey why don't you run for a local office or why don't you go to fall conference and um, I hope you do I mean, it, it, it'll, it'll be memories and, and last your lifetime. Thank you. Kristen also went down here. Oh, oh Kristen, uh, yes. Oh, yes, she went to the national contest in photography. So, do any of your students want to come out and tell your story or share your experience? It's a perfect opportunity to, to try. Okay. Skills USA, uh, you know, all of a sudden to the state. And then went to nationals. Oklahoma, you know, we, we participated and represented Oklahoma in our event. Oklahoma set records in uh, several different ways. We had the most medals of any state, and we had our fair share of those. Then, um, uh, you know, Oklahoma is the first state to ever get all three. You can have a maximum of three national officers on it for the board. And we were the first state to ever do all four. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So That's we, awesome. We had a really good trip to the state and trying mm -hmm. to keep us all represented. Yeah, what well, Timothy makes a really good point. You know, when we go at a state and local level, we're representing our district, High Michigan. But when we go to that national platform, we are representing Oklahoma. So yeah, it's a, a it's a pretty big deal. We had a blast doing it too. It was a really awesome experience. Thank you, Timothy. Something to think about is, you know, when I talk to you guys about being the largest tech center district in the United States and, in, of course, in the state of Oklahoma, we have the opportunity to have students involved at all levels of state competition. We should be bringing home medals of all kinds, and so I'm glad Timothy brought that up. And we're going to do that here at Atoka this year, aren't we? Yeah. Hey, we, we, hey, just for the record, we completely wiped the floor with all the other crime issues, too. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> quote. I'm going to use that quote. <laughs> wiped the floor. <laughs> wiped the floor. I mean, there wasn't nobody even close to us. Yeah. Well, and, and those of you who may not know that um, the career tech system in Oklahoma is one of the strongest in the United States um, that we're very proud of and that uh, people nationwide talk about it all the time that uh, our our tech system was developed back in the 60s, uh, 60s and you know it's grown and we have 29 um, districts across the state of Oklahoma with like 57 or 8 campuses and so there's a lot of other states that come and they look at our model and see what we're doing for the state of Oklahoma to train high school students, to train um, business and industry workforce. And the more skilled workforce we have in Oklahoma, the more we 
attract businesses to our state. That's what we want to continue to do. Okay. Is today's checklist still the same as it has been? Okay. Gacy is our registrar, and what she's going to do, where are you going to do this at, Gacy? Okay. Once we finish here, what we're going to do is move you back out in the student commons area or the, the lobby area where you were. And Gacy is going to um, give you uh, some enrollment forms that you need to fill out. She's going to take your photo for your ID. Um, adults that um, may be in here, financial aid check with Jennifer is important to make sure you're class ready and uh, that there's no issues with your financial aid. And a counselor check with Miss Stoney Pick, and I think she, she's in here, and I don't think I introduced her earlier, and I'm sorry if I miss anyone else. Stoney is our counselor. You guys probably know her. She goes out to the schools a lot, and works with your counselors and principals. Um, and Stoney is, has some things that she's going to visit with you about to make sure you're enrolled in the right session. And if you need an academic course, um, we need to know that. And she's going to give you the calendar and bell schedule as well. Lanyard and sunglasses, um, we have those for you as well. You're going to get a pair of Time Issue Technology Center sunglasses and a lanyard for your ID. And um, that's going to be kind of the last uh, step in our process. Then after that, Becky, after we finish with them up here, then I guess it'll probably, they're going to go on to their program. Okay. But don't go on to your program yet until we get this done because we need to make sure all of our ducks in a row with that. Does anyone have any questions or comments or? Um, I have one if they would go out that door and adults go out this door because I've got adult papers and you've got high school papers. Very good. High school, this door, adults, this door. Thank you.